Hello gin lovers and welcome back to No Nonsense Gin Reviews with me, Bobby Freeman. Now then, cast your eyes upon this suspicious looking little fellow on my left hand side. For this, my friends, is called Dr. J's Gin. Now then, a lot of you are thinking to yourselves, what the bloody hell is that? And I thought the same thing when I first saw it, because I've not heard of this one. Uh, it was actually given to me, me by my brother, which is a little bit strange, because he doesn't like gin, never drinks gin, he likes cider. So um, I'm a little bit suspicious. I hope it's not one of his practical jokes where it turns out to be a urine sample or something. However, that would make a very entertaining video, so let's crack on and hope for the best. Now then, it's made by a company called English Spirit, who I presume are based in Cambridgeshire, or, uh, or Cambridgeshire if you prefer the Lord of the Rings type of reference, uh, because it says here, uh, Dr. J's Dry Cambridgeshire Gin. So let's see what they say about it on the website, shall we? So it starts with, a rare sip indeed. A true distilled gin made from our own sugar beet vodka. Dr. J believes firmly that the simple pleasures are often the most orgasmic. Whoa, 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 slow this down a second. Okay, okay. I've been doing this channel a while now, and I've heard gins described as many, many different things in many, many different ways. In fact, I have used a, a veritable tsunami of adjectives myself in, in which to describe these gins. However, however, my friends, never, not once, uh, did I feel the need to describe the gin as orgasmic. In fact, I go as far as to say it's slightly disturbing and makes me wonder what they've been doing down at the gin distillery. An ensemble of juniper. Good lord, sounds like a theatrical production, doesn't it? An ensemble of juniper, coriander, macadamia nut, and citrus zests come together to produce an emergent taste experience. Good lord. Uh, serve one-to-one -one with tonic. One-to-one? One -to -one? Really? Good lord. So you'd need about sort of that much tonic, uh, that much gin and that much tonic. I think they're trying to get you to use more uh, gin here. It's a nice try, guys, but I'm not going to be doing that today because I'll be wasted. Serve so one-to-one -one with tonic, crushed ice and a couple of salted capers. Well, we're not going to be messing about with any salted capers uh, or indeed ice. As you know, I like to have it sort of undiluted when I uh, try the gins on this channel. Besides, my tonic is extremely cold anyway, so we won't be doing that. Right then, enough talking about it, let's get her open, shall we? Now then, as you can see, it does have a cork, so we all know what that means. It's the cork test! So, here we go, get by, my, by the microphone. Do we have a squeak? No squeak at all, zero squeak. Okay, going for the full pull. Oh my goodness! Oh dear, oh dear. It's let itself down badly on the cork side. I thought that was going to be a good cork side. I don't know why, it felt quite tight in the bottle, but uh, never mind, it's just a bit of fun. Now then, to sniff, going forward, I think I'm going to be doing it out the glass, because the aromas seem to be unleashed a little bit more once you get it in the glass. So is it a clean port? Beautiful and clean. Did it even while I was talking. Excellent. So put that over there. Let's have a sniff of the fellow, shall we? So... Holy shit! Good lord above. That is literally like a full-on bang punch in the face. That smells strong, my friends. It smells very, very, very potent. Um, it, it almost... It almost smells a little bit, it kind of reminds me, I don't know why, a little bit sort of reminiscent of, of smelling a wine, like a white wine. Oh God, yeah, mixed with, oh God, extremely strong stuff, I don't even know what it is. But that smells strong. So with that in mind, let's get some in the old mouth, shall we? So let's whack a bit of the old tonic in there. Actually, that probably is about one-to-one. -one. So let's try it one-to-one, -one, how they said. So here we go. Dr. J's uh, Cambridgeshire Gin. Cheers. I'll do it that way, don't I? Cheers. Much better. <coughs> oh, my God, it burns. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. As I suspected with the smell, that, my friends, is a bloody hardcore gin. I tell you what, it, I'm gonna put a little bit more tight to make it a slightly more uh, sort of normal and friendly measure. Let's try that, see what that does. Oh, I tell you what, it doesn't make much difference actually. That is a very, very unique gin. I don't think I've, wow, a strange aftertaste as well. I don't think I've ever tried anything quite so uh, sort of uh, powerful and pungent like that. It feels like maybe, I, I don't know what I don't know what they do to it. But as I said, forty five percent. It's only a little bit more because you. Well, I suppose it actually does. It, it is quite an increase. As most gins are about 
40, 42, so nice 43. So that bit, that little bit of a jump really does make a difference. Whew, it, is it nice? Is it nice? That's the question we want to know, is it? Um, I think <laughs> it's kind of thrown me a little bit this one. The, the, the strength is so encompassing and overpowering. Um, I think you're gonna, it's one of those gins that you're, you're going to have to take a few goes to get settled into it. It's like if, if anyone's ever poured you a really strong gin when you've been to a bar or any drink for that matter, the first few goes are a bit oh, bloody hell. But then after you settle in, after you settle into it, um, it can't. You kind of sort of adjust. You adapt to it. So actually, you know what? Once you get over that initial shot, it's really kind of there's a, there's a lot of citrus in there. It's heavy on the citrus, but it's kind of backed up with that kind of. I think it said macadamia nut, didn't it? It's fairly simplistic flavours, to be honest. Not a great deal going on there in there in terms of sort of uh, uniqueness, I'd say, in terms of flavours. But the st everything that's there uh, uh, that is uh, sort of like uh, the, it, it, it's got everything that a gin needs and what a gin should have. Everything is like cranked up. It's cranked up to a hundred percent and literally like sort of what, 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 like, what, like on the on the on the Titanic when they sort of uh, stoked up the uh, the boilers uh, the, the engines and everything's going like ding 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 because it's really straining them. It's kind of like that. And again, another slightly bizarre uh, analogy, but I think that's the best way to describe it. It really is a powerful, potent jet, and it's on full steam ahead. So I think I do like it. I do like it. I don't think I'd pick it every time. I don't think I'd drink it a lot because, well, to be quite frankly, I'd be dead. But when you're in the mood for it, you know, I think sometimes it's 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 technically like a, well, it's not really a navy strength. I think they're even uh, stronger, aren't they? But it certainly tastes as strong as a navy, navy strength. I think when you're in the mood for it, sometimes you think, you know what? I've been drinking gin a while. I want something a little bit more hardcore. It's kind of nice to know you've got something a little bit more peppy on the shelf, I would say. And Dr. J certainly fills that gap. Now then, you are going to pay the price quite literally for all that oomph and strength because this is priced on their website at £38, an eye-watering £38, okay, which is about $50 and about €45 Euros because one of my uh, subscribers, one of my very uh, long-standing subscribers, Bruno Ferreira, good old Bruno, has asked if I could do it in Euros as well. I do it mostly, I convert it mostly to dollars because most of my audience are in America, but uh, obviously I am, gonna, I, have, I am gaining more and more in Europe as well, so I shall be doing that for you going forward, Bruno. So it is not, repeat, not a cheap gin. However, it, you, the question you have to ask yourself is, is it worth it? Because I know I always say in previous videos, you shouldn't have to pay over 30 pounds to get a good gin, which is true. You don't have to pay over. But when you have, uh, I've, I've come to learn uh, more about this uh, since I've started doing this uh, show. And um, I understand now that it, when you've got the smaller distilleries that are just starting off uh, in their first few years, they have to charge over 30 pounds, probably about sort of 35, maybe a little bit more in order to make some money so they don't starve to death. So sometimes when you've got a little bit more cash in your pocket, it, I think it's, it's good to uh, buy one of these new gins, even if it is about 35, 36, 37 pounds, and just to support the new distilleries out there. Otherwise, you know, that we, we'd just be drinking the same old stuff all the time. So my advice is, despite, you know, what I've said in the past, I, I still stand by it, you don't need to spend more than 30 pounds. However, occasionally, when you have got a bit more, just, I think it's a good idea just to do it, just to support these new guys that are coming through. My top tip for you today. So guys, it's been an interesting one today. If you think you might like to try the uh, almighty Dr. J's, get out there, give it a go if you can find it, uh, and let me know as always in the comments in the section below. And uh, if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as always, and press the like button, and uh, oh, and don't forget to press the bell button so you'll be notified when all my new videos come out. And I will see you all next time on No Nonsense Gin Reviews, where I shall be Bobby Freeman. Thank you very much, bye-bye.